polishing up for a week on display. The machines behind the robots that make the robots that make the products. Hanover may not quite be open for business, but it's already very much in motion. 24 hours before things open, and as you can see, it's still very much a building site here. It's also absolutely enormous. This is one of more than 25 halls in total. You need a car to get around this site. Hardly surprising, it is after all the world's biggest industrial fair, a chance for the great manufacturing minds to exchange ideas and peddle their wares. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Some of them designed to set your heart a flutter. What does this really have to do with real industry? It's a most intelligent system where you can learn a lot of technology, transfer it to automation, and on one side, you can make experiments. On the other side, you can also train people on the new technology. So this is about learning from nature when it comes to designing your latest technology. Exactly, and you know nature has a lot of excellent ideas, like lightweights, very lightweight. So technology should be also lightweighted. Look at the car industry. If you transfer problems to the nature, to these bionics, people are more creative. They are more, let's say, intuitive. They, they do a lot of things which they will not do if they do just a, a, an actuator of automation. Butterflies and bionic ants may seem a long way from industry as we know it, but this is about inspiring a new era of manufacturing, the digitization of industry, or as the German government calls it, Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is very simple, because I, everybody is used to smartphones, everybody is used to tablet PCs, so new activities, how to operate with systems. And putting these into machines means we get very easy intelligent machines, new movements, new operations, and the new generation of technology will be transferred into this automation. Like the Internet of Things, this is about a smarter, more connected future, one which radically reduces the presence of humans in factories, making way for more intelligent machines that do the work for us and in some cases, alongside us. So the robot takes one assembly step, the lady takes the next assembly step, and together we bring out a very competitive product. Humans and robots working together is the focus for robotics company ABB. Basically what we're doing is we're bringing industrial automation to the next level. As you can see, the robot is outside of the cage. It senses, it feels, it touches. So when you get too close as a human being and there is a safe, uh, unsafe moment, it reacts right away. You work together with the robot rather than a sequential, it's a collaborative approach that we have never had before. That collaboration is core to your strategy. Absolutely. Why is that? Because people think greater automation means less work for humans, but actually no. this is about working together. If you look at the industrial countries with the highest or with the lowest unemployment rates, with the highest levels of employment, these are our countries with the highest level of industrial automation. With Yumi, we really take productivity to the next level. We make sure we safeguard jobs, we take unpleasant parts of the jobs away, and we let the human being focus, our colleagues focus, on the key value-added activities. So there we have it, two chief executives from the world of automation with two radically different approaches. Now there is of course tremendous variety at this event, but there is also one thing that binds every exhibit, and that is this quest for a smarter future, one that brings together the digital and the industrial worlds. All week we'll be hearing about how different companies are doing just that, because the pressure is on to embrace this direction so they don't get left behind.